Yeah. Uh, I think the thing with Kaka too is, I mean, they're both in a situation now where they're just not the players they were at their previous clubs. And by the end of it, Kaka was the type of player who couldn't carry the ball 50 yards like he did with Milan, evade challenges. These, I mean, actually, he could still kind of shoot. He, he, if you gave him space to shoot, he could do that till the end of his career. But he wasn't the type of guy who could evade challenges, dribble past multiple players, carry the ball up the field, and just glide effortlessly. But if you gave him space, he could do something. Hazard's kind of in that situation right now where it's like if – you know, when you see him play with Belgium, if he has the ball at his feet, even at Real Madrid, the, the cameos he had this season, if he has the ball at his feet, you can rely on him not to lose it. And uh, if you give him a sliver of space, he can pick out a really good pass and do something offensively. But he's not going to be the kind of person who's going to break lines necessarily. I will say from like what I see from Hazard with Belgium now is slightly more impressive than what I saw from Kaka later in his career. Like I think Hazard still has a little bit left in the tank, but we have a, we actually have a huge school of Real Madrid video coming out tomorrow or possibly the next day. And I don't want to spoil it too much, but we basically went over the tactical things and the role in Belgium and why it's different at Real Madrid. And I actually wrote about this in my column today. People can go and read it if they haven't already. It's on the website. Um, But the thing with him is that I think he's, yeah, I just don't think he has that explosiveness that he had at Chelsea. I think I think we have to keep our expectations somewhere in the middle where it's like you, he's not going to be the old Chelsea as he claims he will, he will be. And by the way, I don't blame him for feeling that way. I think as a player, you should believe in yourself to that extent. That's he's he has the right mindset. So I'd not, I don't blame him for having that belief at all. I think that's what needs to happen. But I think from a fan perspective, our expectations can't be that he is going to be the old Hazard, nor do I necessarily think that he's going to come back as a bad player. I think he can be still a useful player off the bench. That's that's my opinion. Well, that remains to be seen. I think he can be a valuable contributor. I just I think the answer is probably somewhere in the middle, if that makes sense. And also with Hazard, um, <laughs> it's all down to health. It he can get back to a useful player if he's healthy. That's the bottom line. All of this discussion means nothing if he's not healthy. So I don't know if the plate removed from his ankle all of a sudden makes him not injury prone to end his career, does it? I don't think those two two things are correlated, are they? Doesn't seem like it. No. But here's a question for you. Let's say transfer deadline day comes and a club like Newcastle come and they say, all right, Real Madrid, you know what? We want to bring this marquee Premier League signing in, but we know he's kind of past his best and he's got injury issues. This is what we'll, this is what we're willing to propose. Zero transfer fee. We'll take him on total new contract. We'll give him the same wages. And if he will, we'll pay you based on bonuses. So if he hits like 10 goals or 15 goals, you'll get an amount. If he hits 20 goals, this amount. If we qualify for the Champions League, you'll get this amount. And so like, let's say the bonuses total like maybe 15 million, 5 million for each. Would you take that deal? And the- let's say, and let's say Real Madrid don't have time to, to get a replacement in. That's where you're getting crazy. On the last day, basically, where we don't have time to make any adjustments, do we? If it if that offer comes in tomorrow, I take it, because I don't think if if there was an option like that on the table, I think we would have taken it already. I think there is there is no one really interested in him. That's that's what I believe. Um, I I do it. I do it. I, I do it because his salary is insane. And I I also think that Ramji would even send him out on loan if that was an option for them. But to actually be able to get him off the books forever is something that I think they would definitely take. And my personal Admittedly, I have some bias in what I'm about to say, so feel free to disagree. I personally believe that Aribas is going to be an amazing player. So if that forces us to get Hazard's salary off the books 
and we basically rely rely on Arribas and Rodrigo. It's thin though. It's a thin depth chart. It's really thin. And Asensio. Unless we could juggle like a, late, a last second thing where we bring back Brahim, I don't believe Kubo is ready. Well, I think you... I would do it and then you just really have to survive till January and then you can reevaluate in the in the winter market after the World Cup too. So I would do it. The reality is I don't even know if like I don't have a guarantee if Hazard stays he's even going to be healthy for us, you know. So it may be we we're, we're playing without him anyway. Kind of exactly. dark, but it is yeah. what it is. Um, I mean if you think about it, we played we played without Hazard and Bale basically the whole season last year. So it's yeah. the same depth chart. We didn't really. use our entire depth chart for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and look, as, as much as I, I know people will, will kind of grow and roll their eyes about this, but <laughs> Lucas Vasquez has been a serviceable backup right winger for a long time, whatever you think about him. And I'm not saying you start him, although there, even during the three peat, there were games he started a lot of them, but, but certainly as insurance, he's not a bad option. Um, yeah. which, okay, bef- I want to remind me to come back to Vasquez in the right back situation. But, um, to me with regards to signing a right winger, I looked at all the names. I looked at all the options. In my opinion, there are three names I would sign. Two of them I would sign for sure. One of them I'm still on the fence. I'm not entirely convinced. And that's it. That's the list. Beyond that, do, like I want absolutely no part of paying Rafinha, whatever Barca is paying for Rafinha. To me, that's bad business. On one level, I understand it in the sense that maybe they're desperate. They want depth. They can't rely on a healthy Dembele for an entire season. They want to win now. Um, They want to make sure they have a good season next year to earn even more revenue. Fine. Desperate times, do it. Even (laughs) even though, I mean, financially speaking, I I don't think it's a wise move. But certainly, I wouldn't want Real Madrid to splash that money on Rafinha. Uh, I don't believe he's better than Rodrigo. I think he's not even good enough to justify that price tag. I think he's a good player. I think he's going to make Barcelona better, but I, I I definitely question that amount. These are the three names that I have that I would do, I would sign, and beyond that, I couldn't think of anyone that was attainable anyway that I would I would sign. Uh, Gnabry I would sign. Bernardo Silva, I would sign those two. Those two players, I would sign in a heartbeat. The third one that I'm kind of on the fence still, but ultimately I lean towards no. But if we did it, it wouldn't be the worst thing ever. Would be Mares and Lucas and I already had a segment, and uh, so I don't need to rehash it now. But what do you think of those three names? And is there anyone I missed in the short list that you think you that you would also add? I'm pretty much in the same boat as you on all three of those names. Um... Is there anyone else? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe before his injury, I would have been interested in a guy like Chiesa, but I think it's it, it would be. Shot. Yeah, I don't know if Chiesa is a good um, shot. He's a good. He's yeah. a good young player. Yeah. Um. But yeah, other than that, I think it's it's thin at the right wing. And that's why I think when you have an opportunity like Narby <laughs> and he's on one year on his contract, like take it. I wrote about this today too. I think so much of the luck of a Castilla player will come down to timing. So many players did not have the luck of timing on their side. They're gone now. Aribas may have it. But again, I just don't, I think I might be like, us and I don't mean just me, but I think we might be on a separate island with Arribas. Is um, the stock we have in him? Because I don't know if Ancelotti sees him in the way we do. Um, I think the club it seems like believe in him and want to make sure they don't at least lose him or sell him. Uh, but I don't I don't know what that means for his playing time next season because he may very well just be with Castilla again. Yeah, I don't know what it is about. Like sometimes coaches have a thing about like not like I remember Jose Mourinho we almost lost out on both Carvajal and Hesse because Mourinho didn't want to play either of them and Carvajal went to Bayern Leverkusen and Hesse almost left and then 
once Carlo came in, he brought them back into the fold. But that was like, it was weird. And even Juan Mata had to leave because he wasn't getting chances. And uh, I think it was Capello just didn't rate him at all at the time. So that's just, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that just happens. And I don't think we're wrong to think he's really, really talented player because everything we've seen, and this is everything we've seen, not only at the Castilla level where it's, it's, yeah, it's one thing to say he's great at, at the Castilla level and he scored 15 goals from midfield, but he he's done it in every single game we've seen him play for the first team. He's impressed. Like I always remember every single time you, Om and I got on the pod and we talk about Arribas, even if it was five minutes, he played really well and he would impress. And sometimes he had to play wing back. I remember a couple of times he had to play wing back for Zidane, with Zidane and he still played well. Um so yeah, it's that one's a curious case. I don't really know because he's not even with the first team right now in preseason, which doesn't really make sense to me. But um, Ancelotti just doesn't seem to rate him. But the other thing too, Keon, the other thing too is, I you would have thought like if there was any opportunity for a Castilla player in more recent time to like get promoted and make it to the first team, it would have been kind of in the COVID. Um, those transfer windows during COVID when we were selling everyone, we were selling players and didn't buy a single player. Like that's when I think, okay, maybe there's a chance here for a Castilla player, especially if injuries hit with such a condensed schedule during the COVID time period and everything like that. And it still didn't really happen. So it's like, it, ma- it makes for bleak uh, projections when you think about it from, from that perspective. It's hard to project in general. I mean, just from the outside looking in, because it's so reliant on on managers and their assessment at the time. Speaking of timing and wingers and wingbacks, what's up, Maridisas on YouTube? This is Kian Sobani. What you just heard and listened to is a segment from our Tuesday Tapas shows, which goes up exclusively over on Patreon.com/slash Managing Madrid. The full episode was obviously much longer. We hit on a variety of different subjects, and if you like our work, you like the content. You get a ton more of exclusive content over on patreon.com slash managing Madrid. You get the Tuesday Tapas show, plus you get the Thursday mailbag where Real Madrid fans, including you, if you join, can submit questions and Lucas Navarrete and I will go through and answer them. You get big Champions League post game shows live on Zoom. We actually do video breakdown that we're not even allowed to post on YouTube for copyright reasons. So if you like our content, you want more, you want to join an ever growing Real Madrid family and be a part of something. Go over to patreon.com slash managing Madrid and we'll see you on the inside.